Hi everyone, I'm Miranda and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm so excited to be sharing my ultimate bookish gift guide for Christmas with you all. I've had a lot of fun choosing a wide selection of books that I think would make wonderful Christmas presents. I've particularly got in mind Anglophiles, bibliophiles of course, and people who love gardens, cooking, food history and nature generally. A lot of my interests in fact. But in trying to choose some books around these subjects then I hope my choices will appeal to you and will also put you in mind of some people in your family or friends of yours that you're maybe not sure what to buy for yet for Christmas and I hope that these will give you some ideas. I think books are always the best gift because they're gifts that just keep on giving and I hope you agree and I hope you enjoy my selection. So let's get started. First up, I'm going to show you some books I think would make brilliant stocking stuffers. And the first one is this beautiful almanac. It's called The Almanac, A Seasonal Guide to 2021 by Leah Leendertz. And I absolutely love these almanacs. Leah has been doing them for a few years now. They're this lovely little pocket size that you can see. And so they're lovely to look at, but they're also full of fascinating facts for the months in 2021. So there are little recipes, there's information on moon rises and moon settings, there's little garden tips, there are little seasonal um, information and tips all through the year. And I really love that and I think this would make a lovely stocking stuffer. Then this book I had to include because I think it's absolutely charming. It's The Christmas Tale of Peter Rabbit by Emma Thompson. And you can see it's a really sweet pocket sized little book that I think is just adorable. It's inspired by the original stories of Beatrix Potter and I think that Emma Thompson has told a lovely story of this that Beatrix Potter would definitely approve of. The illustrations are by Eleanor Taylor and she somehow really managed to capture the spirit of Beatrix Potter, I think. They're really delightful. Let's see if you can see that. So there's some really beautiful illustrations through this and it's just such a sweet little tale. I think it would make a lovely little stocking stuffer. This is another favourite small book of mine. It's Time and Place, a pocket book on the art of calendars by Alexandra Harris. I love Alexandra, Alexandra Harris's writing generally. She wrote the book Romantic. Mo Moderns, which I absolutely loved. And this is just a pocket sized little gem all about the art of calendars through the years. It says, calendars allow us to save dates and coordinate our lives, but they are much more than practical documents. They can be beautiful and varied forms of art from illuminated Benedictine manuscripts and Norman fonts to Elizabethan calendar houses, farming almanacs, the poetry of John Clare, and the paintings of Stanley Spencer. And this is illustrated with photographs and beautiful illustrations as well, all through the book. But it's just a charming and fascinating read. I absolutely love it. And yes, it's just a pretty pocket-sized book that I would love to see in my Christmas stocking. I've mentioned this book in one of my previous videos on Christmas reading recommendations, but I just wanted to mention it here again because again, I just think it would make the perfect stocking stuffer. And that's Dorothy Wordsworth's Christmas Birthday by Carol Ann Duffy. You can see the book here. And it's a lovely illustrated poem, which is all about Dorothy Wordsworth's birthday because she was actually born on Christmas Day. So this book is more of a celebration of Dorothy's birth um, than Christ's birth, but it still is a lovely Christmas story. Um, Samuel Taylor Coleridge comes to visit 
the Wordsworth and they have a lovely Christmas together and it's just a really charming little story. Then I love this pocket size book, The Lost Spells by Robert McFarlane and Jackie Morris. There are some beautiful spells or poems throughout this book and the illustrations are absolutely stunning. I mean, this is the sort of book that would be lovely to curl up with on Christmas day, have a little read through, but also just be so impressed by the gorgeous illustrations. It's a really charming read. So yes, again, this would make a lovely stocking stuffer. And then finally, a real choice for bibliophiles is this book, Dear Fahrenheit 451, Love and Heartbreak in the Stacks, A Librarian's Love Letters and Breakup Notes to the Books in Her Life by Annie Spence. I adore this little book. It is so funny that Annie's letters to the books that she reads, some of which she loves, so they are real love letters to some of her favourite books. Some books she doesn't enjoy so much and writes them a breakup note. And it's just such a fun idea. It also introduces you to some books that you might want to try after reading this. And it's just a really light, fun little read. So a perfect stocking filler again. Okay, so those were my stocking stuffer suggestions. Next up, my books that I think any bibliophile would really love. So first up is this beautiful edition of Parallel Lives by Phyllis Rose. This was released by Daunt Books this year. It's one of their publications. It's an older book, but it's a real classic. My mum loves this book and it follows five literary marriages. So it says, the book examines five literary Victorian partnerships from Charles Dickens's disastrous marriage to Catherine Hogarth to George Eliot's joyful and unwed union with George Henry Lewis. So definitely anyone who's interested in Victorian literature in particular, I think would find this a really fascinating read. And I love this new edition by Dawn Books, so I wanted to highlight it. Then also real, any real Anglophile who's also a bibliophile, I'm sure has read the Nancy Mitford books. And this is a classic biography of Nancy Mitford. It's called Life in a Cold Climate by Laura Thompson. This new paperback edition of the biography just came out in October and I think it's really gorgeous. The cover is stunning and it looks like such an interesting read about a fascinating British writer. I'm looking forward to reading this myself very soon, but it would make a wonderful present for any bibliophile and anglophile. Then this was one of my very favourite reads of the year. It's called Dear Reader, The Comfort and Joy of Books by Cathy Rensenbrink. And this really is a love letter to books and to literature and the way that books provide such solace to us and that how they can really impact and enrich our lives. I absolutely adored reading this book. It's a memoir told through books that have been important in Cathy Rensenbrink's life. She's a writer herself, but she's first and foremost, I think, a reader. And this book is about her passion for reading, the books that she read as a young woman, that informed part of her life and the direction that her career and her life in general took. There's also some tragedy at the heart of this book. Cathy lost her brother when she was very young. And she writes about how reading helped her get through that worst time in her life. So it's also a very touching book. But again, it would be a wonderful volume to curl up with on Christmas Day. And it does what all good books do too. It makes you want to go off and read even more. So I highly recommend this one. 
And then another book for a bibliophile that I think would be a great choice is A Bite of the Apple, A Life with Books, Writers and Virago by Lenny Goodings. This came out more at the start of the year and I absolutely loved it. I'm such a fan of Virago Press, the feminist publishing company, and Lenny Goodings was part of the women who first set up Virago. She was there from not its very earliest days, but certainly from its early days. So this book is part memoir about Lenny's career as an editor at Virago, but it also talks about the books that inspired her life. It talks about the authors that she worked with. She met some incredible and worked with some incredible writers like Sarah Waters, in fact she still is her editor I think, Maya Angelou, just so many amazing women and Lenny talks about that in the book and it's just a really wonderful read. I enjoyed it both from learning more about Lenny's perspective on the publishing industry and also about, I enjoyed it through reading more about Virago Press and realising what a special publishing company it really is. I interviewed Lenny actually about this book and it was one of my favourite conversations that I've ever had with a writer, so I definitely recommend this one. And then I love John Mullen's writing. He wrote a fabulous book about Jane Austen. His new one that was just out quite recently is called The Artful Dickens, The Tricks and Ploys of the Great Novelist. I've started reading this and I'm so enjoying it. John Mullen has a collection of essays in here all about Charles Dickens, his work, and a bit about his life as well. And he just always offers such a unique perspective on looking at literary classics. I just really enjoy the way his mind works, the way he writes about classic literature. So this would definitely be a brilliant pick for any bibliophile, especially if you know if they love the novels of Charles Dickens. Then I have to recommend this book too. The hardback came out last year, but the paperback was actually just released a bit in the summer. And it's called Fierce Bad Rabbits, The Tales Behind Children's Picture Books by Claire Pollard. Again, this would be a brilliant read for any bibliophile. It tells the stories behind children's picture books. I adore children's picture books. I mean, I was a primary school teacher for quite a few years, so I really feel how important early literature is for children and exposing them to wonderful books with fantastic illustrations is just so important. So I was really fascinated to read this book. I think Claire was partly inspired to write it when she had her own child, I really started wondering about about some of these classic picture books that so many of us know and, and love, like Peepo, like The Hungry Caterpillar, Dr. Zeus, so many of them. She started to look into the lives of the writers behind the books and the illustrators in some cases as well. And it's just really fascinating. I definitely recommend it. And it's also a really interesting book to read if you're a parent or if you're involved in young children in some way and also in providing them with great literature. And then I recommend this. It gives some fantastic ideas. And then I was so thrilled to get this book recently. It's Bookshop Tours of Britain by Louise Boland. I can only pray that after lockdown and such a difficult year and who knows what may be in the future too, I can only pray that all of these bookshops will still be open when I can get back to traveling and go on a few literary tours of the UK myself, which I cannot wait to do. And I'll definitely be using this book as a guide. I love it because not only do, does Louise Bowen talk about wonderful bookshops all throughout the UK, but she also um, tells you a little bit more than that. She mentions if there are some historic homes in the areas, for instance, that might be of interest too. And so I really like the level of detail 
that's in this book. So she does tours of the UK that essentially revolve around bookshops, which frankly, who doesn't want to travel that way? <laughs> I certainly do. I always look up if there's a bookshop whenever I go anywhere. So I love this idea. So for instance, her Oxford and the Cotswolds tour involves historic bookshops, antiquing and pubs. That sounds like a brilliant weekend away to me. So I think this book will be really inspiring and it's definitely a must for any bibliophile and especially any anglophile too. I think this would be a great choice. Next up, another book that I've enjoyed a lot is A Book Lover's Guide to New York by Cleo Latin. And it's illustrated by her father, Pierre Latin, who's has also illustrated a lot of the New Yorker covers, which might be why these illustrations perhaps look a bit familiar. This is a guide to New York City through bookshops. And I had no idea how many bookshops there are, well, hopefully still are, in New York City until I read this. And there are so many suggestions. If you live in the city or if you're going to be visiting, then I really recommend this one. It's a great literary tour of Manhattan and a bit beyond as well. So I recommend this one. And then another choice for bibliophiles is Spirit of Place. Artists, Writers and the British Landscape by Susan Owens. This was just published this year as well. I think Susan Owens is such a brilliant writer. She writes so well about literature and art and I'm really excited to read this newest book of hers. And I'm so interested myself in how landscape inspires not only artists but also writers and how their work is so intrinsically linked often to a sense of place. I think this book sounds absolutely fascinating. It also has some beautiful illustrations through it as well. So it's quite a special looking book and I think this will make a wonderful gift for any bibliophile too. Then I have to recommend this one, Square Haunting, Five Women, Freedom and London Between the Wars by Francesca Wade. This is certainly a brilliant read if you're a fan not only of books but of the Bloomsbury group in particular and of course of London. This book is about five female writers who lived in Mecklenburg Square in Bloomsbury in the interwar years and some of those women were Virginia Woolf, the poet HD, Dorothy L. Sayers, and Francesca Wade examines their lives, particularly looking at the time in their lives when all of these women lived in Mecklenburg Square. And she writes a little about the history of Bloomsbury too, why so many women writers were drawn to that part of London at that period in history, what freedom it offered them to live there. And it's just really fascinating. I also interviewed Francesca Wade at the start of the year and it was a wonderful conversation. And I just loved this book. It is a really fascinating and fantastic read. So I highly recommend it. And then for any other fans of the Bloomsbury group, I recommend this book that was just published recently too, The Bloomsbury Look by Wendy Hitchmo. This is a gorgeous book all about the Bloomsbury aesthetic and it looks at photography and art um, by members of the, Bloom of the Bloomsbury group. So people like Virginia Woolf and her sister Vanessa Bell. It's just really beautifully done. It looks at the fashion as well and design and yes I definitely recommend this for anyone who is a fan of the Bloomsbury group. This is a wonderful addition to the literature on them. And then finally my suggestion for bibliophiles is this gorgeous coffee table style book called Biblio Style, How We Live at Home with Books by Nina Freudenberger. 
and it looks at homes of generally quite creative people, artists and designers and so on, and it looks at how they use books within their home, how they display them, it looks at private libraries around the world, and it just is a gorgeous book. I think anyone who loves books would really enjoy this, because who doesn't love to drool over other people's bookshelves and who isn't interested in other people's bookshelves. I know I always am. And these certainly provide some wonderful inspiration, these photographs on how to display books, how to build up your own book collection. And there are in interesting interviews with creatives who are also bibliophiles. So this is a gorgeous book and I really recommend it too. So next up, I wanted to recommend some special editions of brilliant books. I think it's wonderful at Christmas time if you're given a special edition of a favourite book. So, for instance, sometimes it's lovely to find a gorgeous vintage edition of a real classic. In the summer, I read The Go-Between by L.P. Hartley and I absolutely adored it. And I tracked down this vintage copy of the book, which I think is absolutely stunning. But I think that would be a wonderful gift to give someone. If you know of a book that they really love, have a look on eBay or Abe Books and see if you can find a really attractive vintage edition of one of their favourite books. I think that's a book that will be treasured for many years to come. And then I absolutely adore the Penguin Vitae books. This is one I have called Sister Outsider by Audre Lorde. This came out earlier in the year in 2020 and I adore the cover. I love that hot pink and gold cover. It's just gorgeous and they've done a really stunning job on many books. There's a new one out of We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. That's on my Christmas wish list but I think this is a lovely edition of some brilliant essays as well by Audre Lorde. The content of this book is just as brilliant as the outside. I love um, collections of essays and I think that this would be a really wonderful gift for someone. So again a really stunning edition of a classic work of literature. And then there's a new Virago Modern Classics book that came out this year, Black Narcissus by Ruma Godden. I'm so excited to read this myself. It's absolutely stunning again. I think it's one of my favourites of their covers and they've done some really beautiful ones. So that really is saying something. But again, a beautiful edition of a classic book is just such a lovely gift. I got this book, The Golden Age of British Short Stories, 1890-1914, as a birthday gift and I'm so thrilled with it. It's a beautiful cloth-bound book, um, part of the sort of Penguin classic series and it brings together a lot of short stories from the golden age of British short story and it's just such a stunning volume. It looks beautiful on my shelf. It's just a really special book. So again, a lovely special edition. I adore short stories, so I was so excited to get this. And then if you know me at all, you know that I adore Jane Austen. It's very hard for me to resist a lovely new edition of one of her books. And this is a gorgeous edition of Pride and Prejudice. What's special about it is that it includes many of the letters that are mentioned in Pride and Prejudice. Letters generally feature heavily throughout the book and for the first time you as the reader can feel like you're actually getting the letters yourself and you can unfold them and read them which I think is just so special. This is a letter, I think from Elizabeth, yeah, from Elizabeth to her aunt, Mrs. Gardner. Put it up so you can see that. 
and it's just so well done. The paper's been created to look old and authentic. All the details from the handwriting that was very carefully thought about, down to the way that the paper is folded, how it's addressed and stamped. All of these details are just fabulous and it's a wonderful tactile way to experience the book that you can actually touch these letters and fold them yourself, read them, look at characters' handwritings. The idea was um, Barbara Heller's and she's just done a fantastic job of creating this. So there, I can't remember how, oh there are 19 letters that are done all through the book and it's absolutely stunning. So this has definitely been one of my favourite book purchases of the year and it would be a wonderful gift to any Austenite in your life. Next up in my guide are books for nature lovers. So first of all I have to mention this beautiful book, The Twelve Birds of Christmas by Stephen Moss. I've spoken before on this channel how much I love Stephen Moss's books. He's written the biography of the bird and the wren and the swallow and this is his book about the twelve birds of Christmas. It says the twelve days of Christmas is one of our best known carols and perfectly captures the spirit of the festive season. Centuries old, the provenance of the carol's long and rather surprising list of gifts, which culminates in a partridge in a pear tree, is now lost in time. In this beautifully illustrated book, best-selling naturalist Stephen Moss gives a whimsical avian interpretation of the carol. Delving into the possible meanings of the verses, he tells the story of 12 fascinating British birds from the partridge and the turtle dove through to the woodpecker and the nightjar. So this is just a brilliant read for Christmas too. I love Stephen Moss's writing, he's such a good writer and I think that this is a really charming and slightly whimsical book for Christmas, so highly recommended. And then Wintering was one of my favourite books from 2022. I interviewed the author Catherine May at the start of the year, just before lockdown happened when we had no idea what was to come and I was so glad that I had read her book. It was such a comforting book to read in a really uncertain time and I think that this would make a wonderful Christmas present too. It's just been re it's just been published in the states I think this month so it's out in America now as well which is wonderful and I really recommend it it's a mix of nature writing memoir Catherine May also writes about her love for reading and the solace of books particularly around Christmas she mentions some lovely Christmas reads in this book and it's about how we all winter and that means how we all go through difficult stages in our lives and Catherine May looks at the season of winter in nature and she thinks about how plants and animals survive this season of wintering themselves, how they get through it and she applies some of those lessons and laws of nature to her own life and philosophy in helping her to get through her periods of darkness or of wintering. Catherine May is also someone who actually adores the winter season so it's an inspiring book in that it also gives you inspiration as how to make the most of winter even if it's not a favourite season of yours. She is quite inspiring in how she writes about it and some of the joys and, ple and pleasures that she manages to find from winter. So it's really a beautiful book and make a wonderful Christmas present and I highly highly recommend it. Next up is this lovely little book called The Wild Journal, A Year of Nurturing Yourself Through Nature by Willow Crosley. Willow is uh, a wonderful 
florist she may she has a course on flower arranging that i would love to take some time but i really enjoy following her on instagram and when her book came out this year i bought it and i think it's a lovely read it goes through the seasons it starts in spring and it gives you ideas of how to enjoy the natural world how to bring nature indoors and how nature helps you to be more mindful and how to nurture yourself essentially there are little recipes um, and fun ideas like she has what she calls a herbal tea library so there are some tips on creating your own tea library which I think is such a fun idea and just lots of really fun little activities there are also little sort of journaling prompts through the book and pages where you can write down some of your own thoughts so it really is just a fun little volume and a great choice for anyone who loves the natural world then I always think it's nice to give some form of seasonal read or diary um, at Christmas and this book I think would really fit the bill. It's called Orchard, A Year in England's Eden by Benedict MacDonald and Nicholas Gates and it says Orchard is a lyrical account of an ancient English orchard from January to December, celebrating the extraordinary range of animals and plants it supports, which make it one of the richest ecosystems left in Britain. So this follows an orchard, as it says, from January throughout the year. And I think it's really fascinating. There are some photographs in the book as well. It was really beautiful and I just love this idea of zoning in on some small part of the landscape or of a garden but looking at it in minute detail and then that broadening out to the wider ecosystem and I love books that take you through the year so I think this would be a really lovely choice And then also a book that was out this year that I'm loving is Monty Don's My Garden World. I think Monty Don is such an amazing writer about gardening and nature. And this is a lovely book. Again, it takes you through the year month by month. So it would also be a really brilliant choice. And then this book was actually recommended to me by one of my followers on Instagram, which was lovely. And when I heard about it, I had to buy it. It's called Rhubarb Rhubarb, a correspondence between a hopeless gardener and a hopeful cook. And it's about two women who are friends. One is a professionally trained cook, the other is a gardener. And they write to each other and help each other out. So when the cook has no idea what to do with her tulips, for instance, then the gardener helps her out. And it's a really lovely little collection of letters. There are some gardening tips, of course, but also some little recipes in the book, which I love. And they're just really fun. I love the letters between the two friends. There are some nice illustrations as well as photographs that they share with each other. I enjoyed this because not only is it a celebration about friendship and food, um, what about, sorry, about gardening and food, it's also a real celebration of friendship between two women and I really enjoyed that about this book so I think this would be a great present. And then another book I've mentioned on this channel before is The Stubborn Light of Things by Melissa Harrison, A Nature Diary. This is a collection of Melissa Harrison's columns that she wrote um, for The Times, I think, for their sort of uh, nature column on Saturdays. And it's got both her columns from the city when she lived in London and also from the countryside when she moved, I think, to Sussex. And so it's a really interesting book 
for city dwellers who love nature as well as countryside dwellers. She really writes about how to make the most of the countryside and find the countryside in urban settings too, which I really enjoy. It's such a gorgeous book too. I mean, when you take the flap off, you can see the cover is absolutely stunning. So I think this will make a wonderful gift for any nature lovers in your life. And then, this book was also published this year, Writing Wild by Catherine Alto. Women writers, ramblers, mavericks who shape how we see the natural world. So several wonderful women writers are featured in this book and it's a lovely anthology of nature writing but Catherine Alto also shares her own essays about the extracts and poems that she picks to showcase in this book and it's a really fascinating read. I've been really enjoying dipping in and out of it throughout the past several months since I bought the book and I highly recommend it. And then this book is a truly gorgeous volume. I think any nature lover, any gardener, any flower would, lover would adore this book. It's called Blooming Flowers, a Seasonal History of Plants and People by Cassia Body. Again, it goes through the year, starting in spring, and it chooses flowers under each season. And it's just absolutely beautiful. This is the daffodil section. And there are some lovely illustrations that are done in colour all through the book, which I think is just wonderful. And Cassia Body examines the history of the plants and the cultural history of these plants in such an interesting way. I thought that this was just a really fascinating book. My mum read it and adored it and I think it would be a brilliant gift. And then next up I'll be sharing some books to cull up with on Christmas Day itself. So first up I think it's lovely to give a short story collection as a Christmas gift because short stories are wonderful to read on Christmas Day and this is a very festive choice. It's a surprise for Christmas and other seasonal mysteries edited by Martin Edwards. My mum bought this back as a surprise for me I think a couple of weeks ago or just before lockdown happened and she went to our local bookshop. I wasn't able to go because I was too busy filming but this was one of the books she chose for me from our bookshop just before it had to close and I'm saving it for Christmas Day. I can't wait to read it then. I um, think it will be just a fun collection of Christmassy short stories, so I'm looking forward to it. Then I've mentioned before that I think almanacs are brilliant gifts for Christmas. They're the sort of book it's fun to quickly flick through on Christmas morning before you've really got to start getting busy. And this almanac I think looks fascinating. It's by Sandy Toxvig, I hope I'm saying that right, and it's called Toxvig's Almanac, Almanac, An Eclectic Meander Through the Historical Year. It's for 2021, obviously. And what's really interesting about this almanac is that it particularly looks at calendar dates in the year through the lives of women, both famous women from history and a lot less well-known women in history too. There are also fun things like a poetry recommendation for each month which I really enjoy. I just, I'm the sort of person who I love collecting little facts or knowing who was born when during the year and this looks right up my street. I think this looks like a really fascinating almanac so I think this will make a brilliant Christmas gift too. Then I wanted to share a lovely light read for Christmas Day and that's Business as Usual by Jane Oliver 
Oliver and Anne Stafford. This was republished just in 2020 and it was one of my favourite reads of the year. It was really light-hearted, it's a novel told in letter form which I really enjoy and there's some sweet little illustrations in amongst the letters which I love. But it's about a young woman who's recently become engaged but she wants a last stab at independence before getting married and she gets a job at a thinly disguised Selfridges in London and she works within the sort of library and book department and it's just full of period detail, I think this was written in the 1930s and it's such a fascinating light-hearted and fun read. I really enjoyed the little romance that happens in this book too. This would be a wonderful one to curl up with the glass of sherry, the mince pie on Christmas day. Light-hearted and fun. And then one of the newest Persephone's that was out is Random Commentary by Dorothy Whipple. And again, I think this is a lovely, slim, light-hearted, interesting book to read on Christmas Day itself. It will make a lovely gift for any book lover, especially people who maybe already know about Persephone books and know of Dorothy Whipple. A lot of people who read Persephone have come across Dorothy Whipple's books. Persephone have now republished all of her novels. And this is a selection taken from her journals. And it's really fascinating. Not only do these entries offer a glimpse into Dorothy Whipple's life, but also they show a writer's mind, which I find so interesting. And they give real insight into her writing process, into her insecurities, how she really battled those insecurities to keep on writing. I really enjoyed it. It's such an inspirational book and I highly recommend it. Then who doesn't want a bit of a giggle on Christmas day? And I think that this book, the Oxford Book of Theatrical Anecdotes by Giles Brandreth is a brilliant opportunity to have a bit of a laugh. In this, Giles has collected some amazing stories about theatre life, about actors and actresses, and the goings-on generally within the world of theatre. I think it's a really fun book to dip in and out of. It's the type of book that you'll probably want to read bits aloud to the family as you're all sort of gathered round on Christmas Day. It's also a great gift idea if you know people in your life who love the theatre, you're not sure what to get them. I think this would be a good choice. Then more books to make you laugh, particularly this one. It's a Country Doctor's Commonplace book by Philip Reese Evans. It was published by Slightly Foxed, I think last Christmas. And I love this commonplace book. It's full of really funny little anecdotes, quotations. I read it over last Christmas and I just roared with laughter over some of the stories told in here and I highly recommend it. It's just a brilliant read for Christmas itself, I think. And then this year, Slightly Fox brought out another commonplace book called An Englishman's Commonplace Book by Roger Hudson. I don't think it's as funny, what I've read so far, it's not as funny as this one, but it still is a lovely book. I really like the idea of commonplace books and I enjoy reading them. And these will make a wonderful companion set, so I highly recommend these too. And then another festive short story collection that I think will make brilliant Christmas Day reading is Christmas is Murder, a chilling short story collection by Val McDermott. I can't wait to read this myself throughout December, but I think curling up with some festive crime stories is just ideal on Christmas Day. And I think this looks like a great short story collection. And then you know how much I love poetry, can't resist sharing a few poetry recommendations too. Again, I think a good poetry anthology is just lovely to dip in and out of on Christmas Day. So first up, this book, A Poem for Every Winter Day, edited by Ali Esiri, is 
wonderful. It starts in December and I think this would just be a lovely gift for someone. They get to enjoy it through all of the winter. There's a lovely selection of poems in here and I think that the cover of the book is a real stunner as well. So definitely this one. And then I'm not sure if I've spoken about these books on this channel before but I really love them. They're the Poetry Pharmacy books. Um, this is volume one and this is volume two. And they're essentially poems that are suggested for certain moods or times in your life when you need to turn to poetry for perhaps comfort. So there are certain conditions and then a poem is recommended to cure or at least help each condition. So Lines for Winter by Mark Strand, for instance, is suggested as a cure for the condition of hopelessness in old age. Or Pied Beauty by Gerald Manley Hopkins is suggested uh, as the solution to disenchantment. So there are some lovely poems chosen in this and there's always a really interesting little essay written on on each poem too, which I really enjoy. So I think these are just delightful poetry anthologies and I really enjoy the idea behind them too. So definitely recommend those. And then my final poetry recommendation for this gift guide is She Will Saw by Anna Sampson, well edited by her. They're Bright Brave Poems of Freedom by Women. This is the follow-up companion anthology to She Is Fierce that was also edited by Anna Sampson. I loved that poetry anthology. This one is absolutely brilliant too. And it offers a selection of poems written by women. And I love how wide-ranging the poems um, collected are in this book. They're both classic poets as well as contemporary poets represented here, which I love because this anthology has introduced me to poets I'd never heard about before. And that was a real joy. So I highly recommend this anthology as well. And then next up, I'll share books that I think foodies particularly would love. Okay, so this is my final category for this gift guide, books for foodies. And first up, I have to recommend the Downton Abbey Christmas Cookbook. I was actually sent this by its author, Regula Izuin. I love Regula's cookbooks. I've interviewed her a couple of times on my podcast and got to know her a little bit. She's so lovely and I was so excited when I realised that she was working on the Downton Abbey Christmas Cookbook. If you're a fan of Downton Abbey, then I think this would definitely be a must for you. It's got wonderful recipes, of course, inspired by the type of food um, the household at Downton Abbey would have eaten, which I think is really interesting. So there's a bit of history to this cookbook as well as insights into the actual TV show. There are, there are photographs from the show and I think it would just be a really fun read. Things like the Downton Turkey Checklist, Choosing Your Bird, Cook Times about the stuffing, about the stuffing and to serve. And it's just really beautifully photographed as well. So yes, there are things like how to host a Downton Christmas and lots of fun things to read in here as well. So yeah, any fans of Downton Abbey would love this and it's just looks, well, it just looks like a wonderful festive read too. And then another foodie and festive read is The Little Library Christmas by Kate Young. I love Kate Young's cookbooks. She writes recipes inspired by literature, which I think is such a great idea. And in this little collection, she's brought together some festive recipes inspired by books. So she writes not only about her favorite 
Christmas food, but also her favourite sort of Christmas reading, extracts from classic books and things like that. And I think that this is a really delightful little Christmassy book and I can't wait to try out some of the recipes myself this December. One of the favourite books that I read this year is Dinner with Edward by Isabel Vincent. I think this was published earlier, maybe even a few years ago in the States, but it only came out towards the end of 2019, I think, here, and I read it in 2020. This is such a life-affirming, affir heartwarming memoir. It's about Isabel Vincent's friendship with a much older man, the friend uh, who was her friend's father, who was called Edward, and he was in his 90s. And Isabel met him when she was going through a very difficult time in her life, overcoming a divorce. And the dinners with Edward that she started having really helped her through that time. Not only the amazing food that he cooked, but also the advice he gave her and his general philosophy on life really helped her. And like I said, it's a wonderful, heartwarming story. I, is, I interviewed Isabel about this book and it was such a wonderful conversation and I really recommend it. It would make a lovely gift for someone too. It's a real celebration of friendship, which is fabulous. And then a cookbook I've absolutely loved this year is The Pastry Chef's Guide, The Secret to Successful Baking Every Time, Who Doesn't Want That, by Ravneet Gill. And Ravneet is one half of the collaboration of two chefs who created the Puff Bakery School. And this is a wonderful online cookery school. And they offer longer courses teaching you so many pastry and baking skills from things like making cheesecake to baking croissants. But what's also great is they offer some mini little courses. Um, for instance, I think there's one that you can purchase just on how to make Basque cheesecake, for instance, and they're really reasonably priced. Ravneet has also written this cookbook, which I love, and I think it would be wonderful to maybe purchase one of the mini courses for someone from Puff Bakery School and perhaps have it as part of the gift with this cookbook. I love the photographs all through here and if you know someone who wants to really up their baking game then this would be a fantastic gift. I'll put links to Puff's Bakery School in the description box down below as well as links to all of these books of course. Then a lovely choice for anyone interested in food and social history is The Biscuit by Lizzie Collingham. And it's the history of a very British indulgence. I think this is a fascinating looking book all about the history of the biscuit and how the biscuit became Britain's quintessential comfort food, in fact. And yeah, it's got some lovely illustrations as well as a few recipes through it and will make a lovely gift. Then next up, another book that really looks at food as well as social history in Britain is Scoff, A History of Food and Class in Britain by Penn Vogler. I think Penn Vogler is such a great writer and this is such a fascinating topic to look at some of the class structures and some of the snobbism that's tied up with not only the types of food that we eat, but how we eat it. It's a really interesting topic, and I'm really looking forward to reading this myself. I'm always so impressed by Penn's writing. Then this book was also out this year by another favorite writer of mine. It's Victory in the Kitchen, The Life of Churchill's Cook by Annie Gray. And this is about the life of the woman who was Churchill's cook during World War II. I haven't read it yet, but it really is high on my list to read. I really want to get to it. I think it sounds absolutely fascinating, and it, I'm sure it will show a side of 
of Churchill that I've never seen before. Um, looking really at the food that he ordered, the food that he and his wife ate, and I'm really fascinated by that. And I think this would make a great gift for someone interested in food and history. And then finally, of course, I was so excited by a new Nigella book this year. It's called Cook, Eat, Repeat, Ingredients, Recipes and Stories by Nigella Lawson. A cookbook is always a wonderful Christmas gift, I think, and I'm sure this one will be on many people's Christmas wish list because it looks fantastic. There's some great looking recipes in here that I really can't wait to try, but also Nigella has gone back to her roots a bit in terms of the style of her food writing in this book. There's a lot more detail, a lot more description and sort of personal stories from her with this book and it looks like an excellent read as well as an excellent book to cook from, so I highly recommend it. But anyway, I think those are all of my choices for Christmas presents. I hope this video has provided you with a lot of inspiration for yourself, perhaps, <laughs> as well as for friends and loved ones. Like I said, I'll put all of the links to these books in the description box down below. And I really hope you enjoyed this. I'll be back again soon with more Christmassy bookish content but do give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face that pops up just over here. Thanks so much for watching, happy shopping, happy preparing and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye!